Next up is going to be the reports interest group. And uh, it's going to be led by Jessica Wolford. Of course, I'm going to be hanging in here as moderator. Jessica, let me get you here so we are all good to go. I want to make sure to thank our sponsors, Emerald Data Networks, Equinox Open Library Initiative, and Mobius for being champion level sponsors for this year's conference. But I'm gonna stop talking right now as soon as Jessica starts talking. <laughs> thank you, Ruth, and thank you sponsors. <clears throat> Hello, I'm Jessica Wolford. I am the convener of the Evergreen Reports Interest Group. Um, I do have a little agenda today. Um, if we don't get through all of the topics, it's, it's no big deal. Uh, I want to make sure that we have time to discuss things that anybody wants to talk about. Also, uh, we have slots for 10 people to jump in here. So if you want to be part of the conversation on mic or on camera, uh, please do feel free to just click on your yep. request. We will access. Have you right in. So that's awesome. All right, so here's my link to the agenda. And like I said, let's not be uh, too scared about well, that's up here. Um, I, I do wanna take a, a moment to just introduce the group. Um, I don't have multiple monitors and things. So if I share my screen, I'm gonna lose uh, like my access to chat and I don't wanna do that. Uh, so I'll try and um, look at the agenda and keep checking back. Um, all right, or maybe I could just share this one tab. Oh, you are awesome, Ruth. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> if you can make that a little bit bigger, that would be fantastic. Um, may, oh, wait, let me get it actually in the right screen. There we go. All right, so welcome everyone to the discussion. Uh, what the heck is this group? Uh, the Reports Interest Group has been meeting for a very long time. It started out as the Reports Task Force, uh, then became the Reports Interest Group. Uh, and then we kind of went on hiatus for a little while, and now we're back. Hooray. Um, so we meet on the last Wednesday of every month, uh, unless something happens or we just don't have anything to talk about, which I don't think will happen for quite a long time now. Um, I've been lucky this year if I've had two weeks to string together where either my family is not sick or um, <laughs> or we haven't, uh, I, the daycare hasn't been closed for whatever reason. Uh, so, so it's been a little bit challenging um, this particular year. Um, uh, but it's uh, it's it's been it's been a thing. Ruth, I don't know if uh, I've got I've got an Equinox support thing on my screen. I don't know if that's what um, you meant to have up there. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yes. No problem. There you go. <laughs> okay. Um, so we do have an organizing committee uh, to sort of get ourselves. Uh, to, I like to be able to throw ideas out at people about uh, discussion topics I haven't been using. The folks that I uh, that I that wrangled up a couple of years ago very much lately, uh, but I would really like to start using that again. Uh, so if if uh, this is interesting to you, um, I want you to be involved in uh, the reports interest group organizing committee. And if you would like to think about that and email me about it later, drop my email into chat. You can do that. I would be very grateful for more people involved so that we don't have to cancel meetings if my child is sick or I am sick or whatever is going on in my life. <laughs> um, so uh, I, I do want to, to just, uh, I wanted to bring some new like sort of positive and, and standing, um, standing agenda items to the, the meeting. Uh, I wanted to talk about um, reports related wins and reports related struggles lately uh, that that people have come come across lately. Uh, so if you have anything to say about that, um, now is the time. There's a question from Jeff in mm -hmm. the chat, which I don't know if you have your chat open. Yeah, I see it now. Okay. Yeah. 
uh, is reporting using non evergreen tools like Jasper reports in the scope of the reports interest group. I think it is very much in the scope of reports interest group, wh whatever people are using to get data out of evergreen. Uh, even just the, the uh, discussion that we had just now, I think is within the purview of the reports interest group because it's like, how can we get data out of evergreen in a way that's, you know, helpful for end users. That's awesome, Jeff. I know that, that that's been a, a, a topic for you uh, for, for several years now. I don't know if anybody else out there is using Jasper reports or has, uh, has implemented that yet. But it's definitely something to, uh, that, that I'd like to um, sort of bring back to the front of my mind. And there's a, there's a bunch of, of stuff out there that's, that's the, like tools that are really cool, uh, like Pine's uh, reporting tool that, they, that they're using uh, is something that, that I've been really interested in. Um, and, uh, and now we've got the simple reporting tool and that's gonna change, uh, I think a lot about how we report, uh, we, we approach uh, reports in the community overall, uh, which is which is awesome. <laughs> and we haven't had to use the Evergreen Reporter in years. Yeah. Power BI being used heavily at KCLS. I'm not familiar with that one. Um, but that is like uh, definitely something that we can. Um, so we're uh, one of the projects that we're going to be working on is um, trying to redo the uh, the reports wiki. Um, so linking to resources about these outside reporting tools would be, uh, I think, within uh, you know something that we can also uh, include there. So I can put that on our on our list as well. Uh, All right. Yeah, um, and uh, just uh, you know, related to this uh, wins and struggles uh, conversation, uh, we recently had a membership survey at Bibliomation in which reports were rated very, very poorly. <laughs> um, so, and that's kind of led me to to sort of rethink um, things a little bit. Um, now that we've got the simple reporter coming in, it's kind of a good uh, opportunity to reevaluate things and uh, and do a little bit of cleanup. Um, I've seen a lot of people uh, recently, like there's been a lot of staff shifting around and reports getting moved over to new people's logins. And people are like running reports off of really, really old templates that they really shouldn't be using anymore. Uh, so I think there's an opportunity for us to clean that stuff out. Um, or try and get people on like newer versions of those of those templates uh, if we can. And um, then I think um, my strategy has always been, oh, if somebody requests a template, you know, maybe somebody else will need it. So we'll just throw it into the the pool of shared report or shared report templates, which uh, now I think we're gonna we're in the, the we're gonna have to be doing some weeding. <laughs> I'm thinking now that the the best um, the best uh, approach to this is something like um, you know having a smaller list of shared templates that's really well documented, as opposed to having you know just a whole bunch of templates in there. Uh, that, that are kind of unwieldy and, uh, you know, maybe not everybody has a use for. Um, so, so that's another thing that, that uh, I think we're going to be thinking about in the next year or so is really weeding out um, some of the, the templates that are in those folders, especially since it, when, it, when we get to 3.9 and implementing the simple reporter, like, do we really need all that stuff that's in there? So uh, it's a, struggle but you know also a bit of an opportunity to to see what's going on 
Taryn says, we just did an audit of old recurring reports set up by staff who are no longer here and we're able to cancel more than 11,000 runs per year. Wow. That's pretty incredible. I might be asking you guys for more details about, about how you approach that. <laughs> Uh, the manage and Ruth says the management of templates is a little problematic. Uh, that's yes, that is an understatement. It'd be great to be able to change the ownership of a report, but when that happens, uh, what happens with the link to the template? Yeah, uh, we have come up with several launch pad bugs that would that would really really help with the management of report of shared report templates centrally. Um, so, and, and I would love to see those get a little bit more, more love. <laughs> uh, I'll drop a link to the, uh, launch pad bugs with the reports tab. All right. Deleted users still had recurring reports. Oh boy. <laughs> Yeah, Beth says we did that too. Reports get scheduled and then forgotten about. Uh, we had some running daily that were not being used according to their creators. We did a report of reports with permission group as a filter. Yeah, I think... Um, when we start building out a page that's like we're, we're going to need a page about reports uh, in order to get some of this information as well. Um, so to, to help with reports management, that's really good. Um, Jeff wants to know if anybody is using tools like Tableau or Metabase. This reminds me, I have a couple of test reports I have to delete. I have many of those. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Marie says, I really enjoyed learning to run reports when we switched over to Evergreen two years ago. I used their instructions along with trial and error. I taught myself how to run and understand the language of editing a cloned report. Yesterday's conference on uh, for reports and ability was very informative. I'm really glad to hear that. Um, I also <laughs> I kind of enjoy running reports some days more than others. Uh, but, uh, but yeah. It's a, it, it's, it's a very powerful tool, which is why I'm glad that it's not getting completely, you know, replaced by the, the simple reporter, which I think also has its place. Um, because, you know, in my, in our consortium, we support a lot of, you know, just very small libraries, really small staff, like we're talking like one director and a lot of volunteers, they're not open, you know, very much. Um, and a lot of these folks just don't have time to dive into and, and learn about uh, the database structure, uh, you know, the way that central site staff uh, do. Um, so, you know, our, our libraries really depend on us to, to run reports in a lot of ways. So uh, I, 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 I'm excited to see what the Simple Reporter does and be able to uh, empower people to build their own templates and, and run their own reports, because I know that there's also a lot of people who are very dissatisfied with uh, the way that we, the, the, when we have to build a, a template for them um, and, and they have to try and find and guess what we were thinking when we built that template. Um, so it's, uh, it, I think it'll be good. Um, it would be great to have a way of importing templates from outside our consortium. Yes. Um, so there are actually um, on the wiki right now, um, there are a couple of templates. And if you have like 
database write access, uh, you can import those templates, but they're very old. Uh, so we're going to be looking at cleaning those up and and uh, and seeing if they still work and whether or not we can replace them with something else. And also, you know, kind of trying to document them more so that if you don't have right access to the database, you can replicate what's what's going on. But yes, there there is a also a bug, I believe, or a, a wish list item about the ability to like export and import report templates. Uh, let's see if I can find it, I will share it. And if anybody beats me to it, uh, that's fine. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not finding it uh, off the top of my head. So if anybody else ha finds a link to it, that would be super. Again, if anybody else would like to be able to speak or um, use your camera or whatever, just click the little link and we can promote you to that if it's easier to explain or in some manner. Yeah. Uh, whether you use the EG reporter or other reporting tool, do library staff run their own reports or do central site staff uh, create and run reports? It really uh, depends on the organization, I think. Yeah. And the size. For for us, we we just we create the templates, but uh, and it's, but it's kind of a mix of, about how libraries use them, like whether they ask us to run them or whether they run them themselves. That's really, it really kind of depends on the library that we're working with. And we at Evergreen Indiana, we encourage our uh, libraries to run as many of their reports as well. We have a pretty large library of templates that they can select from, but then we also uh, could do more training, but do training and have a training manual on how they can either not very many people want to jump off and build their own templates at this point, but they can jump off from a pre uh, created template and clone it and then kind of customize. And we have quite a few that do that. But then we also have some that we have, a, we have a lot of requests for reports and depending on how complex it is, we either train them to run it themselves, which is ideal because it keeps their access to the actual report um, more available to them if they need to, to rerun it or something. But we have a few that we have recurring reports for a few libraries that are on staff members accounts who are no longer at the admin level that, um, so we have to maintain those old accounts as well just for those uh, recurring reports, which is kind of a drag. That's why I said changing ownership would be a lovely thing for that. So we could properly um, mm -hmm. mop all those accounts. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, lately, we've been discouraging folks from cloning templates because if we find that there's a that we've been having some issues where like if there's a newer version of the template they don't know that they have the that there's a newer version of the template and we have no way of telling them that there's a newer version of the template so they have to keep auditing that themselves um and we have no way of replacing that template once they've you know once they've cloned it um so but but then it becomes a problem of how do they find that template in the shared templates later on. So I, there was a, a, a wish list bug that I saw uh, with the ability uh, that that was requesting the ability to like flag like star like some favorite templates uh, like that would be that would be a really cool feature. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, Benjamin wants to know, anyone know what table the template configs live in? Yes, it's reporter.report. Or no, reporter. 
template. Is that right? I think it's reporter.template. <laughs> you know what? I can look it up in the, uh, the IDL right now. <laughs> except I'm the only one talking. So I'll, I'll look that up uh, and put it in the notes. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> yeah, we have some confirmation that it's reporter.template. Hooray, okay. Um, okay, combination, we have some stat dashboards of the combination of the metabase and static reports, uh, request custom reports through consortium staff. Uh, uh, Jeff says this is a mix for them too. Oh, we'd love to see a, a session on uh, what was it called? On on Power BI. That would be that would be really cool. Awesome. All right. So does anybody have anything else that they want to talk about before we dive into talking a little bit about the Wiki Cleanup Project? RBI is a tool from Microsoft. You've probably seen its output in a million COVID-19 dashboards from a variety of state and county sources. Cool. My admin mind immediately goes to, how much does that cost? Uh, <laughs> don't, don't answer that, by the way. <laughs> And if you were in the session just previous to this one um, with Rogan and Jennifer, there was a lot of um, discussion about gathering different types of data that traditionally we would be running reports on and putting them into more of a dashboard um, type thing or things. So it was a natural segue right into this, this conversation. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Okay. If we're all good, uh, I, we can dive in, we can start talking a little bit about uh, cleaning up and updating the reports wiki. Uh, so I was kind of looking at this, I, I put this together pretty much all this morning. Um, and actually, if you could go back, I have questions yeah, on, yeah. The, on the agenda um, that I, that I want to be able to refer back to. Thank you, Ruth. Mm -hmm. um, so um, the goals of this is that just we want to be able to clean up what's already there and then uh, and and update that and update the info uh but also sort of kind of start over and remove some pages that are that are there um maybe retaining the old ones if we think the information is necessary um or just getting rid of it entirely um and also love to be able to create a hub for information on evergreen reports whether that's through evergreen or whether that's through a third party reporting tool. Uh, that would be that would be awesome. Um, so linking to documentation, conference materials, and launchpad bugs uh, that are that are related to reports. Um, so we can get some more attention on those, uh, hopefully. Um, 
And uh, the I think the biggest, probably the most labor intensive part of this would be to get uh, sample reports uh, templates posted um, for new libraries or convert to Evergreen, um, and also uh, just for other people in the community to be able to reference in uh, you know just be like oh, I po or posted the, my template on the wiki. There you go. <laughs> um, so, and by the way, uh, if you're interested in helping with this, we could use, I could definitely use your help. Um, and anybody can uh, ask for a login to the wiki, you know, as long as you're an Evergreen community member and not somebody random. Uh, and, uh, and we'd be happy to have your help with this. Um, so that's cool. So some questions that I wanted to throw out at the group. Um, there's currently like two pages there, which I have linked uh, the main reports wiki page, which I don't think is linked anywhere else, um, and the Indress group page. My question for you all is, do we need both or should we just consolidate them? I would like to see them consolidated. I mean, they're not like particularly, there's not a ton of, they're basically link pages anyway. So yeah, there's exactly. not like a ton of stuff on them. And it's very easy to forget that there's more if it's not yeah. there. And, and I'm, I think at least in my mind, it would make sense because we're, we're at least I am, I'm gonna speak for myself and projected on everybody else in the entire world that um, I would tend to go to the interest group page first. Yeah. Um, and so if we could have the this stuff on the interest group page, that, that would be where I would um, logically go. Yeah, I, I'm down with that too. Awesome. All right, consolidate. And I'd be willing to consolidate that. You're amazing, Ruth. Thank okay. you. <laughs> um, all right. So next question. <laughs> you can go back to the agenda. Yep. Um, so I want to know for people there, I don't know if there's anybody here. I think Jennifer might be here. Uh, for those people that have those cool menus on the left-hand side for the interest groups that have that, how do you do that? <laughs> well, I want it. <laughs> I think it's just a coding thing. You're, yeah. You're talking about this, here's this example right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, the, mm -hmm. the links that are on the left-hand side there. Let me, let me log in real quick. <laughs> See if I can remember my login real quick. Oh, sure. That sounds about right. <laughs> nope. Right on the screen. This is so everybody can see me fail. Where I go? What is that? Okay, never mind. I'm not going to do that right now in front of you, but I will do it off screen and actually get logged in. Um, but I think that it's just a coding thing in there that should be pretty easy to um, actually steal. That would be great. <laughs> and so I I think that I'll take a look and because there's these little um, things over here once I'm actually yeah. logged in that you have access to. Um, yeah. Awesome. So I'll include that. If you are interested in doing that, I'll include that with this consolidation part. Yes. Very, very much interested in that. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> And then we can just, then it's be just a matter of like deciding what we want to keep and change and, and whatnot. All right. Yeah. That's amazing. Uh, and the next question, um, I know there's been talk about cleaning up the wiki in general, which is kind of where this all stemmed from. Anyway, uh, who do we talk to about deleting pages? <laughs> Outreach. Okay. I know that I thought that there was like a, a spreadsheet kind of keeping track of that at one time, but I couldn't find it in my shared documents. So if anybody's got that to share with me, that would be sweet. 
uh, archiving over deleting. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's cool. And, and like I said, some of these we might keep as just, you know, legacy information. I, I am, I would not be a good weeder. I am a pack rat. <laughs> so, um, that's, that tends to be my MO anyway. Um, let's see. Um, so here are my candidates for deletion. Uh, the wish lists page uh, and the the development projects page. Uh, I think those were uh, implemented when I was scared of Launchpad. <laughs> I am no longer scared of Launchpad. <laughs> so uh, so yeah, let's just uh, you know anything that we want to keep track of as far as wish list items or things that are in development or not. Uh, let's just keep track of that in Launchpad. Um, and we can keep talking about it in, in our meetings and, and bringing attention to things, uh, which, which I really like to do. Um, so that's, that's it. Awesome. Thank you, Andrea. And do I, I just reach out to like somebody who's on outreach directly, or is there like a list serve for outreach that I contact? Or that we can contact, I should say. <laughs> awesome. Hooray. Thank you. Beautiful. Copying that right now. All righty. Um, and, and I'm, you know, I'm saying let's delete this stuff, but it really is meant for conversation. Is there anybody who's like, no, don't delete those pages <laughs> or, you know, deprecate archive them. Nobody, nobody is, uh, when in doubt, throw it out. Awesome. <laughs> Uh, all right. So uh, the next part is the part about uh, sample templates. Um, and we, we spent a, a little bit of time talking about this a uh, couple of meetings ago, um, you know, just sort of how to sort of prioritize uh, these things. Um, so, and I didn't post the link here, but I think that I will do that uh, for perhaps a follow-up. And uh, one of the things that I should do is send a link to, so if you're not already a member of our listserv, let me send you, let me give you a link for that. One moment. Um, but so um, when we when we announce the when I announce the meetings, I, I like to do it in both the reports listserv and the general listserv, just in case there's anybody who wants to be wants to come that isn't on the mail the reports mailing list for some reason. Um, but any like follow up uh, conversation happens on the listserv, uh, the reports listserv directly. So. Um, That is what we like to do. And here you go. So if you're not already on the listserv, I would encourage you to join it uh, so we can keep talking about this kinds of stuff. Um, and uh, so at, the, at that meeting, um, Allison from uh, Westchester Library System shared a, a report template that she uses for uh, to determine like what are the most used templates in in the system uh, i for for my use made a few changes to it and um kind of just and it was and uh, for one thing it was kind of illuminating as far as um you know what gets used in your in your consortium uh that that was really cool to see 
uh, but also I think it could be a helpful tool in helping us determine what needs to be documented as far as the templates and what, you know, um, what your consortium is uh, or what your consortium or your library or whatever is uh, is is running and, and what you can contribute as far as shared templates go. Um, so I'll, I my plan is to make a page, uh, maybe the first page uh, on the templates um, wiki will be that template uh, with some some suggestions about how to run it and uh, so that we can figure so that y'all can figure out what your most run templates are and maybe contribute those back, uh, which would be cool. Um, so I wanted to ask, um, I think right now what we've got is if we if you if you go to the sample mm -hmm. templates, it's just like a scratch pad and it's got some SQL on it and it's, uh, you know, it's not it's not totally complete. Um, so I wanted to, and it's all like, uh, you know, it's not separated out by, by like category or anything like that, but us being librarians, <laughs> I'm sure we would like to see that separated out by categories. So maybe a page for circulation stuff, a page for, you know, cataloging stuff, a page for, we've already got a page for acquisitions. Thank you, Act Interest Group, <laughs> uh, and uh, we can use that as a um, as a guide for for going forward and creating that. Um, I was I happened to be at the beginning of the of the session yesterday and seeing that in in uh, in uh, Tiffany and is it Jennifer? Oh yeah, uh, Tiffany's presentation um, that um, that was really cool to see. So so this is. Um, These are all of our, our ACT templates. And we can, we can definitely use this as kind of a baseline for sharing other types of templates, I think. Um, and we also have on here, thanks, Tiffany. <laughs> uh, that, that is, this is our uh, SQL report submission. Um, and this needs, still needs to be tested to make sure that all of those things actually work. Um, but those are, those are there though. So, so that, that's another, another thing we can take a little bit of, of inspiration from because it's already got some sections, um, posted on there. And, um, then we also have some posting guidelines that were, um, developed years and years ago when we first thought about doing this uh and oh sorry no problem <laughs> let me close all of the tabs that i have <clears throat> special cage called sidebar Oh, thank you, Jeff. That's awesome. Cool deal. Ruth, Ruth, can, Ruth, can you uh, click on those posting guidelines so I can yeah. just... Uh, talk about those real quick. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, these guys lines were, were developed when we were the reports task force. Um, so I guess, um, yeah, brief description of the of the report and your purpose and audience. Um, I feel like these could be um, these could be fleshed out a little bit more. Also, I don't think Amy is going to want you to contact her about them. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, she hasn't really uh, gone to these meetings in a while, uh, which is fine. Um, so yeah, and I don't, I'm not really sure what a link to your systems profile is. I think there might have been some information on that on the wiki at, at one time, but maybe like your contact information or something like that if you're if you're comfortable sharing that. 
or your IRC handle or something like that. Um, yeah, so I think this could be fleshed out a little bit more. Um, and if anybody has some ideas, that would be that'd be cool. We seek reports. I would like to suggest differentiating between reports for people with read write access and for those who have uh, read uh, only read access. Maybe examples of queries using non-command line SQL for use in PG and uh, I for one use I, I use PG admin all the time too. Um, that's that is that's a good point. Yeah, I wonder if we need separate posting guidelines for SQL reports versus templates. Because I think, like you said, there's there's different considerations for both, I feel like. Yeah, I was thinking maybe ditching this page entirely and like just having the the guidelines posted at the top of each of these pages individually or like the main starting page uh, for for the sample um, reports. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, and then this way, you know, until we get a mechanism for actually exporting, importing templates, we at least have a resource where we can post stuff and share things, uh, which we do on the listserv as well, but it's a bit more ephemeral than having a, a hub for, for this kind of stuff. That's cool. Well, this is great. I wasn't sure if we were going to get through <laughs> all of my questions, um, but we did, and we we have a lot of extra time. Um, <clears throat> so, does anybody have anything else they want to talk about? Um, I know that uh, for for us, uh, I there was a there was some discussion in the consortium leaders, I, and I kind of missed the tail end of it, or I, or I, I came in at the tail end of the discussion. But there was some discussion about um, possibly with the simple reporter um, changing uh, some reports per, uh, permissions for folks um, and tightening that up a little bit. Um, I don't know if anybody has any thoughts about that, um, but it, it's kind of something that I'm interested in, in exploring once we once we have the simple reporter kind of up and up and ready for testing. Yeah, the concern was, can someone dump a bunch of data about patrons? Yeah. Yeah. 
And I think, I think uh, I agree, Lindsay, it would be good to be able to refine sharing levels, such as two specific users and not just OU levels. Um, yeah. I think there might be uh, a ticket out there about refining permissions uh, as far as who's able to view what templates. Again, I don't know if I'll be able to find it very quickly. <laughs> oh, hey, here's the reporter import export uh, wish list item that I was thinking about. So I can share that. I'm not finding it immediately. Oh, well, there's a, there's a, bug here about i think this came from this group about you know ha admins having the ability to view and manage other people's templates which is kind of the opposite of, of that but it would be very useful for those of us who sort of manage uh shared templates centrally um I can drop that in Andrea's comment is on point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the best launch pad search is someone else's memory. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you found it, Beth. That's awesome. Well, I think since we have a little, a, a bit more time, right? Are we going right up till 1230? Is that a thing? Um, I would probably say maybe like five more minutes. Yeah, okay. Um, well, they, you know, in the last five more minutes, um, are there ever any, you know, I, I know we're all kind of waiting with bated breath to implement a simple reporter maybe all of us are uh but uh and and see what uh how how that changes things um but in the meantime are there any other you know reporter wish list bugs that you all want to talk about that's always a fun subject or you know something that you wish that the reporter did that it doesn't do template you've been trying to build and haven't been able to, something like that. There's a simple reporter bug where it only shows common field headers. No. Oh. Interesting. Have to check on that. Uh, Elizabeth's asking, is it possible to run a report on delete date? Um, 
there isn't a delete. I'm assuming you're talking about, I guess, I guess you can talk about this in any thing, patrons, items, you know, whatever. Uh, that, but there isn't a delete date column in any of those tables. So for our deletion templates, we kind of fudge it a little bit and say like, you know, uh, is deleted true. And then, um, you know, last edit date is, you know, in this range or equals this. And then um, that sort of tells us when the item might have been deleted. Um, that's that's kind of how we do it uh, if if we need that. But but we you know we tell libraries when they get the data like this is a little bit of a of a fudged answer. <laughs> but presumably they're not probably not going to be editing something after it's been deleted. So I may be using an older template, but I can't seem to find or generate a report in collections with dates. Hmm. Our uh, libraries that use collections seem to use their vendor for those types of reports. So I don't have too much experience building those myself. Um, but if anybody else out there has uh, experience with that, um, please, please say so. Is it a... Um, Oh, collections as in items on hand. So do you mean like like at, uh, items that are are new or or what what dates are you referring to specifically? Want the report for six locations. We're asked for a total of items. Uh, we have a list items by shelving location and creation date that we use. Yeah, yeah, that would work. You would need something with either creation date or active date in it. Um, what uh, mo we we have some templates that generate outside of the reporter uh, that will tell our library, like give our, our libraries like a snapshot of the collections that they had like at the first of the month. Um, <clears throat> so a lot of times uh, that seems to, that seems to, that seems to work okay for them. So, but if you, if you really need to know like stuff that didn't exist before, you know, during this, this period of time, um, you'll either, if you're an acquisitions library, I mean, it kind of depends on what you mean by, by dates too. Like if you mean like I ordered it and it's like an acquisitions item and it's pending, like you can use create date. But if you like, if you want it to mean like I've received it, it is on my shelf, it is in my library, then you have to use active date um, for that. I hope that helps. <laughs> Great. All right. Um, I think we are going to give folks some times between the next session to, uh, to stretch your legs and such. Um, so thank you all for the really good discussion and the really good feedback about the, the wiki cleanup project. I really appreciate it. And I hope to see you all at report interest group meetings in the future. It would be lovely. <laughs>